Hey, 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 everybody. It is I, Hope Giselle, and I am here today to talk a little bit about this Zaya Wade situation and why I think that it's completely and utterly disgusting. While I realize that some of you all might think that I have a bias, there is so much more to this. Like things, for instance, um, such as and where about the fact that I'm a human fucking being who's been 14 years old before. End of the story. So before I jump into this, I want to say that the reason why this upsets me is not just because I am a trans woman and so I feel the need to say something because this is an LGBT issue. The reason why I have an issue with a lot of you all and the, and the, and the stuff that you're saying about Zaya is because the main people that have so much to say are some of the people who have children who are low-key their cousins because they had them so young. The main people that have something to say are the little boys who are, you know, low-key just got caught climbing out of somebody's window two years ago. But you want to talk about what people shouldn't be able to do and letting kids be kids and all this and that. And I just want to call bluff. I want to call bullshit. And I want to call it because I think that it is perfectly fine to be bigoted when you're willing to admit your biasy. It is perfectly fine to say you don't fuck with something when you're willing to be real about why you don't fuck with something. It is perfectly okay in my book to not like the way that someone is raising their child as long as you can openly say that that is what it is. But it's the pussyfooting, it's the lying, it's the need to make it seem like it's something other than what it is for me that I can't support. And here's my issue. When I saw this picture, I thought, oh, cute, look at this. A family who is being not only accepting to, you know, the way that Zaya is and who she is, right? But a family that's genuinely accepting of her for real, for real. Because if you're a queer person in America, and especially if you're a person who is from a black family, you understand that sometimes even when your family does say like, oh, we accept you, we love you, all of these things, that that doesn't show up when you want to show up like a regular teenager. For instance, there are a lot of us, when I was growing up, when I came out as gay, my mom did not flip. My mom was perfectly fine when I came out as gay. Everything was cool. You know, I had, you know, it, everything, was, everything was dope. It wasn't until I got a serious boyfriend that shit became a problem. When I got a boyfriend that wasn't a fly by night, when I got a boyfriend that I was talking to every day, when I got a boyfriend that the love was there, that puppy love, and we were talking every day and I wanted to see him and we were going out and we were doing all of the things, that is when, okay, that is when my mom had a problem with everything. And so what I thought was really dope about this picture and what I thought was really dope about Easter was that they are not just people who are saying, we support Zaya, we love her, we're going to stand by her. They're people who are saying, we're going to support her, stand by her and love her and then also allow her the space to have a regular teenage experience. A lot of y'all are upset at the fact that Zaya is being allowed to have a regular teenage experience because of the trauma and the things that we we tell young black queer children about the ways in which they're supposed to love, express, and like themselves. A lot of y'all aren't upset about the picture. A lot of y'all are upset because Dwayne Wade still ain't kicked Zaya to sleep. Y'all are upset that Gabrielle Union is not being a toxic black woman like most of y'all. And I say most of y'all because a lot of cishet black women, right, be on the fuck shit more than the men do. And then the men have to react based off of you all's expression. And we can talk about it or not talk about it. You can be offended or not be offended. But ladies, and especially my black ladies, my black cisgender ladies, and in some cases, some of my black transgender ladies, y'all be out of line with these stereotypes about what black men are supposed to be and how they're supposed to show up. Right. Because a lot of the reason for all of this isn't necessarily because men are so horrible and homophobic and transphobic. It's because men want access to vagina. And if there are a set of women that are going to stop giving men access to vagina because of the way that they think, then guess what? Men are going to act in accordance to that because they want vagina. Point blank in the period. But that's another video for another day. 
when we talk about this video or when we talk about this photo of Zaya just living in her truth, when we talk about this photo of Zaya enjoying what seems to be her, like one of her first little puppy love relationship moments and all of the things and blah, 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 blah. I am seeing nothing that's inappropriate. I'm not seeing something that's super vulgar and, and just vile and all of the things. I see a teenager having their first teenage experience, right? And enjoying that teenage experience transparently amongst her parents. And what a lot of y'all are saying is, oh, back in my day, I would have never. But guess what? Back in our days, a lot of us couldn't because our parents were so toxic about what the fuck it meant to express sexuality that we couldn't do so much as hold hands in front of each other. We are not living in the 90s anymore. We're not living in the early 2000s anymore. We are living in an era and an age of transparency amongst everyone. We are not living in an era where it's my way or the highway. You do as I say and not as I do anymore. We are not living in the same space, right? These kids don't have the parents that we had. These kids don't have the lack of access to things that we had. These kids are on social media. These kids are using their voice. These kids have podcasts. They have all types of content. These kids know how to work phones by the time that they're five years old. And so when we talk about the idea that, okay, well, they can be doing it, but I don't like the fact that it's being posted on social media. They post everything else on social media. There are so many other problematic videos that are surfacing around social media that nobody has a problem with. Nobody. Prime example, the young, the young, the young black gay boy who got beat on camera last year y'all forgot tyler y'all remember when tyler got beat up on his front porch and we were rallying to bat for that nobody talked about the fact that that should not have been posted on social media y'all didn't have an issue with a child being brutalized and beaten on social media for people to comment on talk about give their thoughts and opinions on but y'all have an issue with the fact that there's a kiss on social media between these two children. And you're trying to convince us that your issue is not the kiss, that the issue is the age. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the age. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's, let's have a real conversation about what 14-year-old kids are doing. Because if not holding hands, planning dates, and playing hide and go get it, what are they doing? If not playing hide and go get it, planning dates, on three-way phone calls, doing all of the things, what are 14-year-old kids doing? Because a lot of y'all were fucking at 14, if we want to be real. A lot of you all were fucking at 14. Not just kissing, right? Not just a little head in, in, in the back stairway like, ooh, I did that. Oh, I can't believe it. A lot of y'all were fucking. outright fucking because some of y'all were pregnant at 15 some of the very people in the comments have children that can low-key be your cousins because you had them so early but y'all are talking about what kids shouldn't be doing because they're too young and what i would like for a lot of people to do is stop with the fuckery and the foolishness and say what it really is, which is I don't fuck with that gay shit. And what I don't want you all to do is have my kids out here thinking that they can do that gay shit. Because what y'all also realize is important is visibility. You see, people can act like they don't understand when queer people and black people and marginalized groups of people say that visibility matters. But y'all understand that it y'all and y'all know. Y'all be knowing, y'all know that visibility matters and you know why y'all know that visib vis vis visibility matters? Y'all wanna know how I know you know that visibility matters? Because that's why this picture upsets you. Because this picture showcases a black queer child being able to live in her truth and your child can't do that. And you don't even wanna have a conversation about why your child can't do that. And so this is a problem for you. It's a problem for you because you know that you are not, there's not a chance in hell that you could have done that. And so for some of y'all, it's upsetting because you couldn't have that life. You couldn't live your truth. And so now nobody else gets to live their truth. 
A lot of y'all scream about how you're not going to tell me how to raise my kids. A lot of y'all are real upset when motherfuckers try to tell you the slightest thing about raising a little day-day and baby -bay them. But when it comes down to these queer children, y'all got so much to say. Y'all got so many dissertations to write. Y'all got so many TED Talks and NPR podcasts popping up. It don't make no sense when it comes to these queer children. But let y'all tell it, these little videos of these middle schoolers fighting are perfectly fine to be on the internet. These little videos of these girls that are caught in the back stairway because they've been convinced that they need to do something. Those videos aren't even being asked to be taken down. It's just let's judge the little girl, right, who was convinced that if she did X, Y, and Z to so-and-so in the backyard, you know, or behind the band room, that she would be considered cool. Let's shame her for being a child and being convinced that something was going to make her cooler. Let's shame the little girl. Let's shame queer children into submission so that they can remember their place in society, which is to remind yourself that you are not the norm and you don't get to have a normal experience. You don't get to experience love. You don't get to experience these things. You don't get to go through high school in the same way that we get to go through high school and our children get to go through high school because, bitch, you're not normal. And it bothers you all that Zaya is having a real normal experience, don't it? It makes some of y'all so mad that Zaya is getting to live her best motherfucking life. It makes some of y'all so upset that she doesn't walk around looking like she about to kill herself every day, doesn't it? It makes some of y'all so mad that Dwayne is not forcing her to wear two size too big clothes. Keeping her hair cut extra low for no fucking reason. And forcing her to play sports that she's not good at. It makes some of y'all so mad. It makes some of you all so upset that she gets to have the same experience as the rest of all the other kids. She gets to date. She gets to go to the movies. She gets to have a date for prom. She gets to go to homecoming. She can wear a dress. She's not sneaking. She doesn't have to, you know, piddle paddle. She don't have to understand what jacked and grinder is unless she wants to. Not because she has to. Only if she wants to does she have to have those experiences. And some of y'all are so mad. Some of you all are so upset that she just gets to be a girl. And some of y'all are even more upset that people aren't denying her of that. Y'all are upset that other folks aren't, aren't pitching in to throw the pitchforks at her. Y'all are upset that she's being allowed to show up in her truth. That she's being allowed to hug and kiss and laugh and wear skirts and dresses and pants if she wants to. Y'all are upset about that. But why? But why? Because that 14-year-old girl and, and, and her partner, for now, because we all can assume that this is puppy love. It ain't going to last, right? Right? We can all assume that at 14, we all thought we had somebody that we knew was going to be with forever. And, it did, you know, that shit don't pan out. But for now, that 14-year-old girl and her partner ain't bothering none of y'all. That picture didn't get nobody's lights turned off. That picture didn't make it impossible for any of y'all to pay y'all phone bill. That picture didn't put any of you all in dire danger. That picture did not stop anybody's bag. All that picture did was prove that you all are transphobic as fuck. And it doesn't matter that there's a 14 year old child at the other end of your violence. Because the, the, the thing that I find funny about the black community is that we always say, even in hood rules, that children and women and, and the elderly are off limits, right? But when those kids are gay, lesbian, trans, bisexual, anything other than straight, oh, y'all motherfuckers drop that rule real quick. Y'all drop that rule real quick. When the, when, the, when the child, the woman, the elderly 
happens to be a part of the queer community, that women, children, elderly, that shit go out the window. You a lesbian? Oh, bitch, we don't fuck with you like that. Oh, bitch, you butch? We really don't fuck with you like that. Oh, he gay? We don't really fuck with you like that. You trans? Ha! <laughs> You're not even a person. And y'all hate it. Y'all hate it with a fucking passion. Y'all hate it with a fucking passion. That y'all really thought that Dwayne Wade, because of his career, was going to subscribe to this idea of being bullied into being told how he needs to raise his child as a black man. Y'all thought y'all were going to bully Dwayne Wade into doing what y'all wanted him to do. Because y'all thought he was going to feel so alienated from the game as if he's not one of the best basketball players alive or dead. Y'all thought y'all were going to bully that man into being a bigot. And when that didn't happen, you got upset. And when she started to live in that truth and express that truth and walk in that truth, y'all got even more upset. And now that you're realizing and understanding that this is not just for the gram, it's not just something that she shows up and does to make y'all feel like she's happy, sis is legitimately over there eating grapes and sucking face like any other 14-year-old girl would be. And some of y'all just gonna have to deal. Some of you all are just going to have to deal. And you can't because this is the beginning of the end of bigotry. Because now your children are going to wonder why they can't live in their truth. Because now boys are going to start asking boys to prom. Because now young girls who don't subscribe to femininity politics are going to start to be free. Because now trans folks are not going to feel the need to have to be passable in order to live among society. This is the beginning of the end of the bullshit. And y'all see it and you can't stand it. It's the beginning of the end of the bullshit. It's the beginning of the end of the DL era. Because the more Zayas that we have and the more of her boyfriends that we have, the less need there is to be sneaking around with some nigga that don't know who the fuck he is. The more openness we have about this topic, the more people that are willing to allow their children to be who the fuck they are, the less need there is to be sneaking around with motherfuckers who don't. And if we want to be honest, right, I talked a little bit about the women, but let's talk about the men and why some of them are upset. The reason why a lot of these guys are upset, some of them are upset is because the more visibility there is. That reminds trans women that we are valuable, that we are beautiful, that we can find love, that there is love for us beyond the shadows, that we don't have to be sneaking and creeping and putting ourselves in these awkward ass positions in order to, to feel love for a temporary period. The less of y'all that are getting responses to them DMs. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that because I know a lot of y'all upset because them DMs is going unanswered because the girls got, the girls have boyfriends. Y'all ain't used to that. The girls got boyfriends now. So she don't need your random 2 a.m. in the morning dick pic. Because she gets one every day. She can go in her room now and pull down a pair of pants that belong to her. She doesn't need that back alley love no more. She don't need that Jack Grinder BGC scruff love no more. She don't have to settle for getting dressed up and beautifying herself to sit in her living room and have you come and eat her shit up, fuck her, leave her with a wet orifices and go back to your baby mama. She ain't got to settle for that no more. The girls don't have to settle for that no more and y'all are upset. But Zaya scares y'all because what y'all thought y'all were going to do was say, fuck the old girls. Y'all getting too hip. We going to go. We going to find these baby trans. We going to go to the baby trans. They don't know no better. But guess what? 
These parents are waking the fuck up. You're not going to be out here convincing my baby that they're, they're less than. You're not going to be out here convincing my baby that they're a, tertiary, a tertiary citizen. Because I got my baby's back and she's going to know that she don't have to sneak and creep for nobody. She's going to know that she's more valuable than a 2 a.m. jacked message. She's going to know that she's more valuable than a faceless profile that wants to love her. And that's what really got y'all in y'all feels. Because the more visibility there is for positive affirmations for being who we are, the less time we feel like spending on explaining to you and your DL ass with all of your trauma and your mental shit why I don't feel like coming to your house and why we need to go out to dinner. And for every one of you that won't because of all the excuses, my mama, them, my life, everybody can't come out, everybody can't. And I'm going there. I'm getting there, y'all. Just give me a second. I'm getting, let me make this point and I'm going to make that one, right? But all of the excuses that you got lined up, the, the girls don't have time for them no more because we got visibility. And these young girls every single day are finding more men and women and, and non-binary people that are with the shits. And y'all realize that. And Zaya is a staple for that. Without even trying. But the other part about these comments that really irk my soul. I made a post earlier. And for the most part, it was, a, it was, it was an echo chamber, right? We all kind of agreed with one another. But there were some people that had some really interesting points that offered some different things. And they said, well, Hope, you can't just assume that all DL men are, are you know, like they, they're fucked up and this and that. Like everybody can't come out, Hope. Like it's just, it's not, like there are circumstances. What circumstances? Hmm? Hmm? Because I don't want friends that don't want me because of who I love. I don't want to surround myself with family that doesn't want to be my family because of who I love. I don't want a job that's going to fire me even though I'm overqualified because of who I love. I want to be where I am wanted at all times. And so therefore, when I hear people try to justify the need for someone to be DL, Based off of social context and bullshit, I call bullshit on that. Because for people to be out here notating all of the reasons why folks don't come out, but then still perpetuate the behavior that makes people not want to come out. I understand now and I understand very clearly that the problem is not our community. The problem is motherfuckers outside of the community that make people feel like the folks in our community have some sort of issue. But it's not us. It's not us. And the more Zayas there are, and the more Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Unions there are, and the more celebrity that we get, the more Angelica Rosses that you see, the more India Moors that you see, the more Laverne Coxes, the more Hope Giselles, the more Amaya Scotts, the more all of these people that you see. It makes it so much harder for y'all to justify the bullshit because now not only are you seeing that, you know what, these people that don't want to fuck with me because of who I am are less important. But also, if I truly want to engage with this community, I'm going to have to do one thing or the other. And when you realize that you have to choose between loving someone and getting the job because this job doesn't like the fact that you love someone, you start to realize how ridiculous shit is. When you realize that you're really upset at these people because they have the courage to do what you can't, you start to feel silly. When you realize that you can't affect the dynamic of what goes on in someone else's house, no matter how much you huff and puff, you feel silly. What I want to say is this. 
to those of you all who legitimately have an issue with 14 year olds kissing because it was in front of their parents. How many of us, right, can honestly admit that the only reason that we didn't feel comfortable kissing in front of our parents was because we were threatened with violence? It's not because we think that it's just so rude and disrespectful. It's because my mama said she would slap my face off. My mom and my daddy wasn't having that. My daddy would have beat me up, child. So is it really because the activity is disrespectful and rude or is it because our parents made us feel like it was? Is it really because it's out of line or is it because, you know, the, these kids are too young or is it because we've been taught that we don't get a say so and how we maneuver through life and how we discover these things? Is it because we've been taught that if you're going to do something, then do it on the low and try not to get caught? Because we live in a world, and especially within the black community, we live in a world and in a space where we spend so much time trying to tell each other and share the secrets on how to sneak and creep. That when we see someone that has the freedom to be able to just be themselves in front of their parents, we think it's something wrong with them. No, bitch, it's something wrong with you and the trauma that you've been through. There's something wrong with the way that you were raised and brought up. There's something wrong with the fact that you got to sneak around your parents. I don't have to. I can talk to my mom about my sexual identity and, and, and the way that I'm exploring things. I can have real conversations with my parents and be able to navigate this shit in a way that's safe so that I'm not out here in these streets figuring out shits with other 14 year olds that are going to guide me down the wrong path. Because how many of y'all had a friend that got pregnant in middle school, high school? was fucking in middle school and high school because they was listening to your dumb ass who was listening to your big sister or your big brother or your cousin. How many of y'all had siblings and shit that was doing all type of stuff behind your mom and your dad's back that might not have happened if they were able to have open dialogue and real conversation about what they were going through, how they were feeling, and be able to have a real conversation with their parents instead of having somebody tell you what you couldn't do and not explain anything because they're, just, they're, they're the adult. Because I got a couple of homegirls with babies. Middle school, babies. Ninth grade, high school, babies. But I've seen some of them in the comments talking about what's not right and who's too young. But I know you. And I know what you was doing when you were 14. So make it make sense. But we can't. Because the issue isn't the kiss. The issue is that a lot of y'all are uncomfortable with the fact that queer folks don't feel the need to hide it anymore. A lot of y'all are upset at the fact that it was okay to have a gay friend and to know that that friend was gay, but you didn't want to see what they were doing. It was okay to have a, a friend that was a poem. As long as you never had to see his boyfriend. You never had to see them making out. He never talked about it with you because he understood that it made you uncomfortable. And now the kids are bringing them full, their, their full selves to the party and y'all can't take no more. The kids are bringing their full selves to the party and y'all can't take no more. Y'all mad because the kids don't feel the need to sugarcoat that shit no more. The gay boys are not sitting around pretending to like girls anymore. They're talking about their boyfriends. The trans girls are not coming to school pretending that that's not who they are anymore. They're showing up. And that makes you uncomfortable. And it makes you uncomfortable because in our community, there's this, this lightweight sense of you got to know your place. And for so long, queer, pe queer people knew their place. Queer kids knew their place on the playground. They understood that you couldn't just go to school and be a certain way. You couldn't just be in a neighborhood and be a certain way. You had to show up as an alternate version of yourself. And people are okay with that. People are okay with LGBT folks so long as we do it in a way that keeps you comfortable. 
But why? But why? Because the city girls make me uncomfortable sometimes. Some of the outfits that they wear are too much. But I don't feel the need to make a whole dissertation about it. I don't feel like they need to just be canceled out of the, out of the world just because I don't I don't particularly agree with the way that they dress and some of the things that they promote to young women. And while we're at it, let's talk about that. Some of y'all are talking about 14 year olds being too, too young to be kissing. But half of y'all 14 year olds know every word to every song on the last city girls album. And bitch, let me tell you, that is not child appropriate. But your daughter out here singing every motherfucking word to act up. And instead of her getting smacked up by you, you looking at that shit recording and putting that on social media. But you have a problem with this kiss though. Ooh, some of y'all, man. I just hurt some of y'all feelings. I just hurt some of, I know. Some of y'all thinking real hard. And some of y'all can't stand me right now. I know. I know. Because I've seen it. We've all seen it. Some of y'all are real upset about this kiss. But y'all sons are out here rapping every word to money bag, yo. He know every motherfucking word. Ain't finished his report. Ain't, ain't finished his report on history yet. But he know every word to that new money bag, yo song. I guarantee you. Some of your children are in toxic ass relationships because of these improper influences in hip hop culture. Some of them think that this shit that Jada Wada and all of them got going on is cute and that that is how relationships are supposed to work. And y'all think that that shit is so funny. Child, they on again, off again. You know how these kids is. At 14. And y'all support that. Y'all condone that. You allow him to come over. You allow him to talk to your child or any type of way. And you think that it's cute because it's normal. Some of y'all quiet because you know it's true. And you haven't thought about it this way because you don't give a fuck. Because who is the tranny on the screen telling me what's normal? How dare you, you trans bitch? You're the, you're the abnormal one. You don't get to sit on live and judge me, bitch. You're, you're, the, you're the weirdo. Maybe I am, but I don't give a fuck because my bills is paid. You thinking that I'm weird ain't going to stop my phone bill from getting paid. It don't stop my car from running. It don't stop me from being able to go out of the country whenever the fuck I feel like it. So who gives a fuck? And the sad part about it is that if more of you took that tone, we wouldn't have no problem. Because if you notice, you don't see queer people complaining about the shit that cishet people do a lot of the time. You don't see a bunch of gay boys sitting around in forums or on Facebook talking about how we can't stand niggas sagging their pants. You don't, you don't see that. You don't see a bunch of lesbian women sitting around talking about how they don't like how, you know, cishet girls be out here just doing the most with this girly shit. You don't see that. Because we don't have time to worry about how you live in when we live in how we want to be living. And if more of you all took that approach, you wouldn't give a fuck about this picture of somebody else's 14 year old child. Because you'd be too busy raising your own or minding your business. A lot of y'all have never left your city, but you worried about somebody else's child. A lot of y'all still ain't think about the fact that Mother's Day is coming up and you ain't got shit for your mama, but you worry about somebody else's child. A lot of y'all lace is lifting, but you worried about somebody else's child. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. The world is so much more, it, it, it's so much more vast than Puerto Rico, Cancun, Miami, New York, and LA. 
There is so much more shit out here in the world to see than those places and your front backyard and a couple of blocks around your house. But instead of talking about how we can increase our credit, continue to build property, continue to do all of these amazing things, help somebody with their business, we on the internet arguing down about whether or not we agree with how somebody else is raising their child who's not a killer, who's not a drug dealer, who from what I can see is doing excellent in school. Have you heard Zaya speak? Because some of y'all motherfuckers that's talking shit about Zaya and the way that she's being raised, y'all, don't, y'all children can't formulate a sentence to save their life. But you're talking about somebody else's child. Make it make sense. And so I'll leave y'all with this, right? Sometimes the reason why queer people get upset at the commentary isn't because you have an opposing view. It is because you think that you are smart enough to play on our intelligence and say that the reason for your opposing view is anything but what it is. A lot of you all don't like queer people You don't fuck with trans people. You can't stand gay people. And when the topic arises, because you know that you have absolutely no reason not to like somebody because of those things, you come up with every other excuse in the book for why you're being stupid and ignorant and belligerent. And you spew that shit to my face as if I'm supposed to believe it. And that's what gets a lot of y'all cussed the fuck out. Because I can deal with a motherfucker who says I'm not with that gay shit to my face. I can deal with a motherfucker that says I don't want you around me. I don't fuck with people like you. But what I can't deal with and what grinds my gears and makes my ass itch. The shit that makes me twirl around on a sandpaper dildo is when some of you bitches sit in our faces. And say, I don't have no problem with you, but. I don't have no issue with gay people, but. I don't have no problem with trans folks, but. When I don't have a problem with something, I don't have a problem with it. I do not have a problem with the fact that there are several different types of shoe stores from which I can shop at. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I do not have a problem with the fact that Black Friday comes around every year and I get to enjoy sales. There is no but. Buts are things like, I don't have a problem with the fact that there are public restrooms. But I have an issue with the fact that usually they are dirty. Which means I do have a problem with public restrooms. Because there's dirt in them. I don't really fuck with public restrooms like that. But we say things like that because we understand the nuances of two things being true at one time. But when we're talking about a person's humanity. When we're talking about a person's humanhood. What it means to live and exist. You either fuck with them or you don't. Stop the, stop the love the sinner, hate the sin bullshit because you can't do both at the same time. When you don't fuck with a person fundamentally, there's no way to play both sides. People get their ass whooped for playing both sides. You either fuck with someone or you don't. A person's humanity is not up for negotiation. There is no both and when you are talking about people. You either fuck with people or you don't. And a lot of y'all would be better off just being honest and saying, I don't fuck with y'all. 
And this is a fundamental problem for me because I don't fuck with that gay shit. And I do not believe that kids should be out here doing this while gay because I don't want my children to see this gay shit because I don't think that it's normal. I don't want my children to see this trans shit because I don't think that it's normal. I don't fuck with that. But when y'all come up with all of these elaborate ass plans and hide behind this curtain like you the Wizard of Oz, thinking that queer people don't understand what you're really trying to say, it is an insult to our intelligence. Because it has nothing to do with Zaya being 14. It has everything to do with the art that most of y'all still have not accepted that she is trans. A lot of y'all have not accepted the fact that she is still living a good life. And I know I said that I was going to wrap it up, but, but, but the sad part about it is, and I have to say this because I think a lot of you all need to hear it. The thing that is so tragic to me is, had Zaya come out and Dwayne Wade made a public statement about how he wasn't going to be fucking with that and we had been seeing pictures of Zaya miserable, wearing basketball jerseys, looking like her big brothers, nobody would have a problem. Think about it. Think about it. People wouldn't even bat an eyelash at the fact that that child was miserable. Because at least he's normal. At least he looks normal. And so now I don't have to check my bullshit. Because they've done what they're supposed to do as parents. Which is make him cover that shit up. So that I can be comfortable. And the sad part about it is that if that were the case, since some of y'all care about these children oh so motherfucking much, if that were the case, there's a lot of you all that wouldn't give two fucks that that child was unhappy. But then here's the other kicker. Let's say that that was the case. And then Zaya commits suicide. Now everybody mad at Dwayne Wade, right? Because that was fucked up. Because we know right from wrong. Because, and, 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 and let's just, let's, let's be real. And this is why the LGBT community be going the fuck off on y'all. Because y'all think that we don't know these things. Y'all think that we haven't seen these things. Y'all think that we haven't lived this shit. Because y'all be, y'all will be the first people to tell somebody to pack it up, to throw it away, to put it in the closet, to dig deep down and put it in a hole and bury that shit. But then when a person buries them, when they bury themselves, then it's, oh, that was so fucked up. I can't believe people was treating them like that. Like that ain't even right. People should, y'all need to mind y'all business. Like people need to just be able to be themselves. They wasn't bothering nobody, but bitch, you were the one talking shit. So what is it? Is it that people should be able to live the lives that they want to live? Or is it that we're going to have to fake protect the children? Is it that people should be able to be happy? Or is it that I don't want my child learning about that gay shit because they shouldn't be learning about that? Is it, oh, nobody should have to be experiencing violence? Or is it, oh, nah, fuck that shit. My son can't be in the class with nobody that's doing that. What is it? What is it? Because it seems to me like y'all know right from wrong. You just don't want to do right from wrong. Because wrong is easier because that's what the majority of the people are doing for now. And notice I say for now. Because the tables are changing. And y'all see it. Y'all see how things are moving. The girls are on TV shows and the girls are not playing trans girls no more. The girls are just playing girls. And that's bothering y'all because y'all boyfriends don't know. And they little dicks be hard. 
Y'all are upset because these trans men are on these TV shows and y'all don't know that he's trans because he's just the firefighter. His sexuality and his gender don't matter. He's just a firefighter and some of y'all bitches pussies be so wet. Y'all are upset that the kids are able to just be themselves. Y'all are so upset that we're not having to be boxed into this idea of every time you see us, it's just about us being trans. Y'all are upset. Y'all are upset that the tides are turning. And that you are seeing more of us and not realizing that we are who we are because there's not this need to inherently disclose our business to you every single time you see us on a movie screen. Every single time you see us on a television show. Every single time we grace the cover of a magazine. And you're upset. And you're upset. And it makes you angry. Because y'all want to go back to the days where LGBT people, the only escape that we had was in some back alley. Some bottom of the barrel club that somebody just happened to get through the, through the osmosis at 2 a.m. in the morning. Where y'all saw all the little queens and, and everybody else sneaking through. And y'all knew where we were, but, we, but because we were out of your way and we knew our place, it was okay. But how dare we come to your bars and your clubs and buy out sections? How dare we come and get our hair done at your salons and sit in your barber's chairs? How dare we walk through the mall with our head held high buying the same designers that you can buy? How dare we say fuck those surgeries and the need to fit in and look like you? How dare we? How dare the girl say fuck that shit, I'm a woman whether I got this wig on or not? How dare the boys say I'm a man regardless of whether or not I still have these boobs? How dare the girl say fuck that pussy surgery, I'm not getting it, that's not what I want and I'm still a woman. How dare we? Huh? How dare we? And that makes a lot of y'all so upset. And so when we have this conversation about this 14 year old kissing her boyfriend, I want us to all be mindful that it is always and forever deeper than that. It's never just about the picture. It's never just about what she had on. It's never just about the fact that she's a child. It's always about this generational trauma that they want us to hold on to. And the further away that we get from it, the more upset that they become. The more that they have to wake up and realize that trans people are on the news, that gay men are doing football and sports, that you have all of these different people in the hip hop community. The more that they have to wake up and see the vision behind their faves and understand and recognize that no longer or gone are the days of you having this bomb ass gay team behind the scenes and nobody knows it. And everybody just thinks that you have the sauce. No, bitch. No, we know Tokyo did that hair. Nah, bitch. We know Erica LaPerla slayed that face. Nah, bitch. We know Nikki Tutorials is out here killing it. No, I know who wrote that song. D. She wrote that song. The more that y'all have to see us in everyday spaces, the more violent and belligerent you get. Because you're hoping that something that you do will scare us back into submission. And every time Boosie goes live and that don't work, y'all get a little bit more upset. Every time somebody says something stupid on stage and our faith is not shaken and our movements don't stop, Y'all get a little bit more upset. And every time pride comes around, whether it's virtual or not, y'all get a little bit more upset. And you're starting to realize that we don't care. 
Because living in my truth and being happy is 10 times better than pretending to be someone who likes something that I don't, ruining somebody else's life because I feel the need to lie to them, then being judged for that because I was trying to not be judged in the first place. Ain't that about a bitch? Ain't that about a bitch though? You spend your whole life living a lie so that you won't be judged. Only to turn around, get caught, and be judged anyway. But who cares? Who cares about the mental health of a gay black man? Who gives a fuck about the femininity of a masculine lesbian woman? Who validates the, the womanhood of a trans girl? And who gives a shit if young queer children, God forbid, have a decent adolescent experience? Because that's supposed to be your story. You're supposed to be able to get your ass whooped after school every day. You're supposed to be taunted in the hallways. You're supposed to get jumped at least one time in your life. You're supposed to experience turmoil. You're supposed to have professors question whether or not you're intelligent simply because of who you are. You're supposed to have people look down on you and think that you're an idiot simply because of who you are. You're supposed to have a less viable experience because of who you are, who you love, or how you show up. And when you don't, there are the some of you that are upset. And y'all gotta let that shit go. So with that being said, I thought that the picture was cute, right? And if I'm honest, if I have to be real about a problem that I had with that photo. I'm more upset that this child is dating Wonder Bread. Than I am about the fact that they were kissing at 14. And I don't mean any disrespect to any of my white followers. Right. I don't mean any disrespect to anyone who is in an interracial relationship. And I understand Right. So the nuance of the situation is I get it. I get it. I'm more upset about the fact that this child is on here kissing this person that's as pale as paper. I could care less about the kiss. I could care less about the dating. I am upset that you got a family full of black folk that are embodying this super blackness. But you out here dating this thing that is as pale as paper. And I'm going to be very careful with my words because they are still a child. Zaya, Zaya's, you know, partner is still a child as well. But let me be very clear about this. I ain't trying to rag on the child. I'm just being colloquial in this moment. Right? I'm being colloquial. So please don't, don't come on here and say I'm, I'm cyberbullying a kid because I'm not. I'm just being colloquial. We speaking, right? Most of my audience is black. Or a person of color who grew up around black people. So y'all know what I meant. Okay. But that's what I'm upset about. If I'm going to have a conversation about anything. I'm going to have a conversation about that. Because where's the preservation of black love? But the nuance is I get it. Because as a black boy. Right. A lot of these black boys are not being taught to, to, to value black women, let alone a black woman who's trans. And then on top of that, a lot of these black boys want to be on the DL. And I'll be I'll be damned if I'm one of the most prestigious black trans women, children in the world. And you feel you think you're going to keep me in a box and I'm going to sneak and creep with you. Hell, fuck no. Right. And so I get I understand why this might have happened. But also, 
Bitch, what the fuck? Can we have a conversation about black love in that household, right? But once again, I'm going to mind my business because that ain't my baby. But if I were going to have a conversation about that, I'm not going to pretend to have a conversation about how I'm so upset about a 14-year-old engaging in 14-year-old politics. I'm going to have a conversation about what we're teaching our black children about, about the way that it means to love people that look like them. Because when it all falls down, oh, ain't it all? When it all falls down. That little white boy does not understand the struggle. That little white boy doesn't even understand for real, for real, the nuance between hatred because she is trans and the hatred that she is getting because she is both black and trans and the, the, the understanding of the way that black men see this versus the, under, the, the way that black women see. That, that white child don't understand none of that. Those white people don't understand any of that. They may be able to empathize. They may be able to, you know, sit down and hear the story. But they don't get it for real. That, that, if I got a problem with anything going on with Zaya right now, it is that. But we all got to learn. And it's not to say that all white people are, are bad and horrible and that y'all just don't get the black experience, but you don't. And you never will. No matter how close or adjacent you are to us, you will never understand what it means, what it's like, the nuances and the intricacies of what it takes to be a black and queer person in America. You will never get it. And I've dated white men and they didn't get it, which is why I can't date them. I've liked white men. But then I have a conversation with them. I've liked white women, but they're fucking horrible sometimes. And so I leave them where they are at. Because in so many situations, I need a partner that I can come home to. That I don't have to explain the nuance to. I need a person that I can walk into the door with and drop my shit on the table and they get it. Because I don't have an extra 45 minutes in my rant to spend telling you about why this is important to have you gaslight me and tell me that maybe I'm overreacting because then I'm going to overreact on your ass and we're not going to be together no more. So that's what I would be upset about if I was upset about anything in that video or in that photo. But for now... Let kids be kids. And that means let kids be kids no matter what type of child they are. No matter what gender politic they subscribe to or, or, or sexuality that they find themselves experimenting with or identifying with. Let kids show up as the best version of themselves on a daily. Okay? And that's my two cents. I hope that some of you all get it. I know that some of y'all won't because some of y'all, I know some of y'all were with me until I said that shit at the end about the white folks because y'all be so wrapped up in white men, it don't make no sense. Like, I know, I know some of y'all are watching this from your burner pages and y'all are like, oh, I, I was fucking with you till you said that. I hope once again, you're creating segregation in the community. Girl, no, I'm not. Sir, no, I'm not. Madam sibling, no, I'm not. I'm just calling shit like it is. And I don't feel the need to suck on white penis or lick on white coochie to make my arguments valid in the world. Because I understand that at the end of the day, 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 no matter how sweet they are, no matter how affirming they are, no matter how awesome they may be and how many opportunities that they may have given, bitch, they still don't, won't, can't, and never will get it. And so there's always a chance that you will be thrown under the bus or left out in the cold.
But that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother video on a whole different day. I love y'all. And like I say, this time and every time, peace, love, and hope. And I hope that this shed some new perspective for those of you all who were looking for some. Um, I hope that for those of you all who disagree with me, that we can disagree and still love one another because that's the way that life works and maturity works in the same way. I hope that for those of you all who do understand every word that I just said, that, you know, y'all can articulate it better. Because I know sometimes people be waiting on other people's videos and thoughts because y'all be like, that's what I wanted to say, but I didn't know how to say it. So thank you. You know, like, so I hope, you know, that that is what it did for some of you all. And for those of you all who feel indifferent and just watch the video because you just like, well, damn, I just wanted to hear somebody talk about it. You welcome, chair. <laughs> um, but those are my thoughts. That's my two cents. And I only jumped on this because I truly and genuinely fuck with Gabrielle. I fuck with Dwayne. Like I, I, I've shared my thoughts about how they're raising that that child and and how amazing I think she is on several occasions. And it bothers me every single time she posts something or shares a little bit of her happiness with us that the whole fucking world feels the need to go in on this girl like she just fucking said that she was gonna bomb the White House. Doesn't make sense to me. She's 14. She's 14. <sighs> Y'all have a good night, Chad. <laughs> Bye, everybody.